So the topic for today is understanding and clocking the different signs of a counterfeit. A counterfeit being, as the name suggests, someone who is a phony, a fraud, fake, not the real thing. Someone who poses as your kingdom spouse or your God ordained partner, but they are not it. They are sent from the enemy to distract you from your calling and the person you're meant to be with. This person will look a lot like the person you wrote down in your journal, you know, the husband slash or wife that you've always wanted and you pray to God about, you know, they can check off all the boxes on your list. But there's just one thing or a few things off about them, but you know, you proceed anyways to date them because you are moving and thinking by your flesh and not by your spirit. You are taking things into your own accord and not listening to God, your father. You know, there are a lot of times we find ourselves in counterfeit relationships when God did not tell us to hop in, but we hop in anyways because we are stubborn and we don't listen. But luckily, the good news is God has given us grace and he allows these things to happen because, of course, we do have free will um, in order for us to learn our lesson, change our heart posture, gain more wisdom. So we know better later on in the future not to make the same mistake again. But, you know, some of us do repeat the same mistakes. Okay, so the first sign, which is the most obvious, that you are dealing with a counterfeit is... They are pulling you away from God and closer to sin. 1 Corinthians 6, 18 says, run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. I'm going to be very transparent here. When I was dealing with my counterfeit, I backslid. I fell into sexual sin. I broke my abstinence journey. I was rationalizing and trying to find loopholes around this. So I was like, okay, well, technically, if you're my boyfriend and you, I think you're the one, I think you're my kingdom spouse because you check off all the boxes on my list. So if you're my boyfriend, I, I think that counts. Like we're, we're going to get married anyways in my little head. I thought that we were going to get married because I thought he was it. Did I get a sign or confirmation from God? No, I did not. I went ahead and just tried to make it work. And obviously, it did not work. So, I do not want you guys to make the same mistake I did <laughs> to... Ignore what the Bible says. I found myself breaking my promises to God, growing further and further away from God. So I used to hear God clearly. I, I used to spend so much time with God, talking to Jesus all the time, in my devotional, in my word. And I found that the more I stayed with this person, the further and further away I was from God. And the more I was sinning, I couldn't hear God as clearly as I did before. And that was very saddening. I remember sitting there and just feeling so sad because I felt disconnected from God. And I started to feel that, that emptiness and void in the inside. And I knew what I was doing was wrong. And I knew deep down in me that this man was not it. After a while, I was like, I just saw all the red flags and the signs. And I even had dreams and confirmations that he was not it. I had a dream one time when I was at his place. In the dream, I went to sleep paralysis. And there was this demon on top of me trying to like, I don't know, attack me basically. It was, it was so scary. And for some reason, this always happened at his place. Uh, like I should have known right there. If you or guys are getting spiritually attacked in your dreams while you're with this person, there it's a big sign, big red flag that you are sleeping with. 
not to say that this person is, de is the devil, but remember that we are not dealing with flesh. We are dealing with spirits and principalities. So whatever spirits, demons is on this person and you are sitting with them, you are becoming one with them. Guess what? Their demons and their spirits are hopping on to you, sis or bro. That's why it's so important to run from sexual sin. Literally run. Sex was meant for marriage. A covenant between you and that person that God has ordained for you. Not for these people out in the streets. Okay, point blank period. The second sign that you are dealing with a counterfeit. Another obvious one, but it may not be obvious to you. They're not pursuing Jesus, aka they're unequally yoked. So in the context of human relationships, to be unequally yoked with unbelievers is to be in a situation that binds you to the decisions and actions of people who have values and purposes incompatible with Jesus's values and purposes. If this person is not pursuing Jesus, if he doesn't, if he doesn't claim that Christ is Lord, our Savior, you should not be with this person. In 2 Corinthians 6 14, don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? Now, it's not to say that unbelievers are bad people. There are really amazing people out there that don't believe in Christ, which is okay. That's fine. But it makes it very difficult to cultivate a strong relationship with the Lord if that person is not pursuing the Lord as well. You guys are going to be going through so many trials and tribulations. So many struggles because you guys don't share the same belief. You guys are unequally yoked. And it's not to say that they can't get saved later, but you guys, ooh, you gonna, you're going to have to be praying a lot for this person and going through so many spiritual warfares and just struggles within the relationship. And they're not going to be understanding anything that you go through they won't be equipped with god's armor to protect and cover you to pray over you to intercede for you when that time comes when you are going through spiritual warfare they're gonna be they don't understand spiritual warfare they're gonna be looking at you like you're crazy when you say you got attacked by the devil shoot he might send you to the asylum who knows because some people don't believe in that stuff so I'm here to tell you, if this person is not pursuing Jesus, if their first love is not God, it will not work. Because in order to love another person the way you deserve to be loved, you have to know the love of Jesus. You have to know Jesus. Jesus is love. Love is Jesus. So how can they love you? God wanted you to be loved the way Jesus loved the church. If he doesn't understand that concept, if he doesn't know it, if he doesn't, if he hasn't felt it, then you're going to be running around begging and searching for this love from this person that cannot give you that love. God wants you to have this amazing relationship, this amazing love, a love close to that love of Christ, but nothing can compare to the love of Christ, just saying. But it can be close enough. But remember, we're still, we're still human. So, you know, we have certain capacities and boundaries. Jesus's love is the benchmark and baseline that everyone should be trying to pursue. And if they don't know it, then honey, I don't know where they're gonna pull this love from. From thin air, they're gonna, they can give you worldly love, which is very superficial, surface level, and not, and lack substance, any spiritual substance. And that is not what you want, especially if you are spiritual and you have a deep and intimate relationship with the Lord. And the next point is tying into the second one, but the third point is they don't understand your spiritual gifts and they don't share the same spiritual foundations there are a lot of christian people out there but there are a lot of lukewarm christians out there that don't even know what holy spirit is <laughs> you'll be very surprised they'll look at you like you're crazy when you bring up the devil satan there are christians out there that do not have prophetic gifts that have not even heard god's voice have gone through the fire with God have been through the valley of darkness. Like there are Christians out there that have gone to church their entire life, but still only know of Jesus, only know of God, but they don't know God. 
there's a difference between knowing God and knowing of God. I've been with people who claimed Christian, proclaimed they love God, but they were living like they didn't know the Bible. Let me give you an example. Okay. I dated a guy who in the mornings, you know, would listen to worship music and he read his Bible and he always told me to pray, but we never, he never, we never actually prayed together or anything like that. He never actually went to church, maybe a few times here and there. When I started reading the Bible and I started getting deeper into my relationship with God and I learned that we were not, God cannot bless a relationship if you guys are sitting, fornicating, having sex outside of marriage. I remember one, one time I was like, hey, I, like, I didn't want to have sex. In the Bible, a Christian man should be protecting a woman's purity. You would think his role as a man, as a God-fearing man, as a godly man, he should be leading me to the path of, of purity and holiness. And you would think he would have agreed like, hey, yeah, you're right. Like, we shouldn't be doing this. No, instead, he got mad. Christian or not, any man that gets mad at you for not wanting to have sex is the biggest red flag ever. I wish I wasn't as naive as I was back then because I really thought like, oh, well, I guess he's right. So stupid of me, right? But now in hindsight, that was wrong. That was very wrong. He did apologize for it later on that night. And then later on, the deeper I got into my word, I said, hey, do you think we should like be abstinent? His response was, why? What's the point? We're already doing it. If anybody ever says something like this, run, run, girl, run. I should have ran. That was the biggest red flag. If a Christian man, any man, but for him to call himself a Christian man, a God-fearing man, to have responded that way, run they can call themselves christians but if you know you have a very deep intimate relationship with god and they are not on that level they are still lukewarm and they are still surface level like they they only know of jesus but they don't know jesus like that that's still red flag sis and that he still could be a counterfeit even if he does have a deep relationship with God, right? And he knows the Bible in and out. But say, for example, there's like a couple of things that's like a little wrong here, right? He still believes in other like conspiracy theories. And like, he still thinks like the Bible is rigged a little bit. Even that little bit, you're like, you should still question that. Like that could still be a counterfeit. So if you guys are not on the same wavelength spiritually, a believer, non-believer, given, don't, don't be with them, but a believer and like a believer, but like they're very surface level, very still in the world, very much still out here sinning and acting like a heathen, even though they know they're not supposed to be. And you're trying not to be that way. In the Bible, it says being around bad company can corrupt good behavior. Okay, so I spent a lot of time on point number three, but number point number four, I say this all the time and I talk about this all the time. If they don't have the fruit of the spirit. So in Galatians 5, 22 to 23, it says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. If you replace Holy Spirit in this Bible verse with that person's name, can you say that so-and-so, Joey, Miranda, whoever they represent, they have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control? then that's a pretty good sign that, you know, they, you know, they have some, they, they could be your kingdom spouse. But remember, you always have to test the spirit. You always have to test the fruit of their spirit. And you have to sit back and watch because people can show you these things right up front. But, you know, you got to spend some time to really get to know them, really go through trials and tribulations with them, really go through life with them to see, okay, yeah, but... If they don't, if they don't possess these qualities, if they don't have the fruit of the spirit, 
then that's a big sign that they are a counterfeit and they are not meant for you and God did not send them to you. This pretty much wraps up all of my biggest four signs that you are dating a counterfeit. I hope this video helps someone out there because I know as a child of God, if I'm going through this or if I have gone through this recently, um, then I know another sister in Christ, another brother in Christ is also going through the same thing. Because I don't know why, but like as children of God, we tend to have parallel lives and go through same exact scenarios all at the same time. So I know another friend of mine, she's trying to discern if the guy she's dealing with is a counterfeit. And it's just crazy how it happened all at the same time. So I know you guys are going through that too. Maybe it's that season. I felt the Holy Spirit urge me to make this video and share my stories of how I was dealing with counterfeits. As your sister in Christ, I want to share and be transparent so that hopefully you don't make the same mistakes I did and you can catch these signs too. Obviously, this message isn't meant for everyone, so please take it back to God, pray on it, get some confirmation from God. I can only speak from my personal experience. I pray that God continues to guide you through this season and you guys continue to cultivate a deep relationship with the Lord. So the deeper your relationship with God, the easier it is to discern the counterfeits from the real thing, your God-ordained spouse. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. And thank you so much for following me on this journey, this walk with Christ. It's only going to get better from here. Just watch.